you, you also see the central bank digital currency and we have we have politicians talking about Bitcoin mm -hmm. now. You have DeSantis, Kennedy, and what's the name of the, the third guy, the Republican, Vivek? Rama or something. Yeah, Vivek, yeah. And then there's uh, Senator Loomis also. Loomis, right? Yeah. It's absolutely insane. You have you have three presidential candidates that are open to supporting Bitcoin and Crazy. and and opposing central bank digital currencies. Mm -hmm. Um and that's why I my when it, with regards to what, what happens to Bitcoin, I still believe that the Americans are smart enough to get to to understand that, you know. They are the only the only country in the world with, that has people that would not the only the Germans are gonna join mm. at some point, but but you could still do it. There is enough capitalism and free market and you know um, like life, liberty, and the pursuit of Bitcoin basically, mm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, you could do that. Hey everybody, welcome to the What Is Money Show. I am thrilled to have you here joining me on my mission to help shine light on the corruption of money. Now, if this is your first time listening to the What Is Money Show, I strongly recommend that you go back to episodes one through nine first, which lays a lot of the groundwork for many of the concepts that we explore on the show. These first nine episodes are my series with Michael Saylor and thousands of people have told me that this is the best podcast series they've ever heard hands down, and that it was instrumental to their understanding of money and Bitcoin. So if you're looking to start uh, a deep dive into the nature of money, I don't think there's any place better that you can start other than episode one of this show. Now, a little bit about this show and how it makes money. The What Is Money show is 100% sponsor based. So all of our revenues are derived from direct sponsorships. And I strive to be very selective about the sponsors that I work with, specifically only using sponsors that I use personally, and also choosing sponsors that have values which are well aligned to the values expressed on this show, such as freedom, education, self-sovereignty, etc. So what I'm going to do now is a few ad reads right at the top of the show, and then I'll do a few more ad reads in the middle. And I hope you'll take the time to listen to them, as again, these are hand-selected sponsors, and I think you'll like what they have to offer. Today's podcast is brought to you by In Wolf's Clothing. Wolf is the first startup accelerator dedicated exclusively to the Bitcoin Lightning Network. Four times per year, Wolf brings teams from around the world to New York City to work with like-minded entrepreneurs, pushing the boundaries of what's possible with Bitcoin and Lightning. The program is designed to help early-stage companies achieve product market fit, develop their brand, secure early-stage funding, and grow businesses that help fuel the global adoption of Bitcoin. So go to wolfnyc.com to learn more about the program or apply. Again, that's WolfNYC, W-O-L-F-N-Y-C dot com. Nico Yield, welcome to the What Is Money show. Thanks for having me, Robert. It's great to have you here. Uh, just by way of super short introduction, uh, you are a financial journalist uh, based where? Vienna, Austria. Vienna, Austria, yes. wonderful. And we're sitting here in Prague at Bitcoin Prague uh, doing this interview live. So it's, it's great to have you on. And you brought a very interesting story to the table today um, in regards to how the, the EU has been trying to get away from the USD. Yeah. And it looks like this story has got a lot of twists and turns. It does. So where, where do we begin this tale? I mean, most Bitcoiners will know about 1971, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the end of the gold standards, the Nixon kills in the gold window, basically not you know giving out the gold to the rest of the world. Back then, the rest of the world was basically Europe, right? There was no China to speak of. Um, the South America, Africa didn't matter. The rest of the world was Europe. And uh, in, in Europe, especially in France, Charles de Gaulle, the president, he didn't like the fact that the Americans uh, had this exorbitant privilege. It's something that the, the French actually came up with, the exorbitant privilege of um, you know, just printing the money and, and, mm. and uh, um, we all had to be, quote unquote use it. Something that today, for example, the Brazilians are talking about, the Chinese are talking about back then, it was the French. And so, so Charles de Gaulle, he would actually send the warships to, to, to New York and go get the gold, right? And he got most of the gold. He got mm -hmm. most of the gold. But then the Americans said, enough is enough. And Nixon closed the gold window. The Germans actually sent a letter, the so-called blessing letter, um, at the end of the 60s, 
said, "Yeah, we we promise we're not gonna get the gold. We promise we're not gonna get the gold." And you have to you have to to see that why did they have gold in the first place? I mean, they were t- completely destroyed after the after the war. Yes, the Americans helped them on their feet again, mm-hmm. and then they worked, 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 worked. What Germans do, right? Right. And and so they had enormous amounts of gold. But they they sent a letter. They said, "No, you know, thank you for 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 protecting us. Thank you for freeing us uh, uh, from the Nazis. Thank you for protecting us from the Soviets." Um, we promise we're not going to get the gold, right? And then he actually said in 1971, shortly before Nixon closed the gold window, Blessing said it was a mistake. He should have gotten the gold. Mm. Germany got their gold back, half of it, um, decades later in 2015. Mm. Austria did the same thing. I actually went to the to the gold vault twice um, to to have a look at the shiny metal. In, in Germany? In Austria. In Austria. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, so... Then Nixon closed the gold window, you know, and the whole world went on the fiat money standard. Mm-hmm. We all know about the inflation, the continuum effect, and 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 the negative consequences of that. Uh, w- one question: the a lot of the gold ended up in North America as a consequence of World War II, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. As, as technically, as a consequence of of the Americans being the strongest economic nation, right? Um, the British, the British were, I think, the British sent a uh, like a portion of their gold there. And most of the gold um, that that was also owned by the by the by the other countries ended up in the U.S. Yes, officially to be because we were still afraid that the Russians would just move in, right, mm-hmm. and and just take the gold. So it's better to have it have it on the other side of the right. sea. But it was like fifty percent protection, fifty percent held held hostage, right? Gotcha. So you, you you never know, you never know, right? right. Um, but yeah, most of the gold back then. Um, it, we were not holding the gold. We were holding U.S. paper, but you could ex- exchange the paper for gold, right. and nobody did it. Yeah. The French did it, and then the Americans said, okay, we still have 8,000 tons of gold. How about we just close the gold window? We default on our obligations. And then what we saw in the 70s, you know, basically what, what the closing of the gold window was was a devaluation of the dollar. Mm-hmm. So what we saw in the 70s was the, the oil nations, the second, more, more, uh, second very important player here, the oil nations said, well, yeah, but if we get less purchasing power for the oil, we have to check up the prices. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Europeans would get the the the, the main um, the main problems with that because back then we were introduced to the concept of a car-free Sunday because uh, mm-hmm. oil was so expensive, gas was so expensive that people um, had to had to were, were forced or were told by the government to not use their cars on Sundays, mm-hmm. right? Um, and we, now we're talking about this again because now we see not economically but like on the street and like on the on the ground level we see uh, a replay of the 70s like high inflation we, we don't really know what to do about it um, so we had you had high inflation for for about 10 years you had you had multiple currency problems um, many 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 problems and then the Europeans um, were starting to 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 work closer together so the mm-hmm. the, 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 the seeds for what would become the euro were sown in in the 60s right and at the end of the at the end of the 70s, um, at a, at an IMF meeting in Belgrade, I don't know why it was in Belgrade, but it was in Belgrade. Um, Paul Volcker, who is known as the the guy who saved the dollar, basically broke the back of inflation. Broke the back of inflation yeah. exactly. He was forced to do that by the Europeans. They basically told him, "Enough is enough. You have to do something." And he was and and he actually went home earlier than than planned. And had an a, an emergency session of the Federal Reserve Board the same day when he arrived. He basically told them, "Wait for me at the airport. We are we are we are checking rates immediately." You know, so they really had something that they, that really shocked him. We don't know to this day why, because because of course back then, okay, the U.S. didn't have as as high debt levels, so you could do it. You could right. end inflation with with high rates, but it wasn't good for the American economy, of course. Sure. Sure, and so that was. We don't know what the Europeans said to him at that meeting. Then, not exactly. But they inspired him to come home. And... There is, there is, there is like language in the official documents that would imp- uh, that that would you know make you think that there was very stern discussions between the Germans, the French, and the Americans. Right. Okay. So then, from there, where did we go? Obviously, he succeeded in breaking the back of inflation in the seventies. And then the the EU went on to establish the euro as a means of getting away from the USD, or what was the? So the idea was always back then that the Europeans realized that they had to 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 find some way of of being their own boss economically. You know, but militarily is a is a whole different story. Mm-hmm. But economically, you have to find some way. 
and uh, very quickly they actually went with the with the route that um, we talk about today. They went with the sly roundabout way route because they knew they couldn't just you know come together and say like the BRICS do today. They they they, they knew they couldn't just come together and say we are going to establish our currency and then you know fuck the dollar and we're doing our own thing. They they were smarter than that, right? So they they said we we have to find a way to implement this in a way that the the market we let the market decide basically. Um, that's why there is a, a huge gold component in the euro. And the eurozone has about twelve thousand tons of gold. It's more than any other um, uh, country. That's also ironically why they would sell gold um, in preparation of launching the euro, so that the other countries would also have some chips to play with them. Right. 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 Um, but just to emphasize that sure. point, though, you said the EU has more gold reserves than any other nation. So yes. this is the combination of. I'm not sure which countries primarily contribute to that. So this would be. It's the eurozone, which yeah. is not it's not exclusively the, the EU. So right now in Czech Republic, we're in the EU, but we don't we're not in the eurozone. Okay. The eurozone has I think what nineteen or twenty members now. Okay, um, Croatia just joined, and and yes, they have more gold than the US. They have about um, like one one third more than the US. Okay, together, and they also have. Um, a relationship to gold that is different than we saw before. So oh, every other fiat currency in the history was actually um, based on gold and then maybe debased from gold, but it was always started with gold. The euro was the first currency, and they, 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 they talked about this, the first currency that was launched um, independent of gold mm -hmm. and independent of the nation state, mm -hmm. but they still hold a lot of gold in reserves that gets marked to market on the balance sheet all uh, every uh, four times a year which means that if the price of gold rises, the, the balance sheet of the ECB gets stronger mm -hmm. as opposed to just getting the, the currency just getting weaker. Yes, the currency gets weaker, but the balance sheet gets stronger. Right. Um, and, and today, this model is used by all major central banks. Not only the, the Fed is not doing it. The Fed is still, the Fed is still um, um, valuing, valuing its gold at $42 an ounce right. in its balance sheet. And there is like, I don't know if it's true, but there is like rumors that if they would ever change that, that theoretically the rest of the world could come, you know, could go a legal, a legal route and say, right, we had this contract, guys. We had this contract uh, back from Bretton Woods that you, we, you would sell us the, 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 the gold at this, at this price. So mm. maybe we just pay $40, $42 for an ounce of gold. Mm. Well, well, that's a side story. But um, so the Europeans had this idea that they needed to come up with something. But of course, a, a, a common European currency back in the 70s was still a complete pipe dream, right? Mm. There is still American economists who don't believe that the euro exists to this day because mm. they can't they can't fathom the idea of the Europeans doing anything alone. And, and to be fair, the idea might have been interesting. The execution is is very questionable to this day. Right. And now this is where you said there might be some actual parallels between BTC and the euro. I mean, I get. I get hated when I say this, but yes, <laughs> yes, it's true. I mean, the idea of the euro, the, the idea of a central bank, basically, they always always say, well, you look at inflation and we are independent from the state. Yeah. In practice, it's not true. But the, the, the idea was we make the most independent and most um, um, inflation-oriented or inflation-capping-oriented um, fiat money the world has ever seen. Inflation-resistant. It say maybe inflation. They, yeah. In the beginning, you know, it was sold to the Germans right. as as a pan European Deutschmark, and the mm -hmm. Deutschmark was the hardest fiat currency mm -hmm. we had uh, uh, after the war, right? Um, of course, we know that many things went wrong, and it's not it didn't happen that way. But that was the idea. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about how this started out, and the idea was that you had a central bank that would be independent of the state and would not have a fin uh, a finance minister on the same level. There are finance ministers, but they are um, th there's 19 of them, 20 of them, yeah. right? And then you had the interest of one country um, and the interest of the other country, and the idea was that would give the central bankers more um, more w uh, room to maneuver. Now, I don't condone central banking, sure, yes, but mm -hmm. that is the idea. And and we do have to look at, uh, for a second at what the Americans did after 71. So the Americans did two very important things after 71. The first thing was in 72, Nixon would drop Taiwan and go to China, to Peking, and uh, to Beijing, and um, and basically embrace the Chinese and bring the Chinese to the table. Back then, China was a complete backwater, but it was mm -hmm. the Americans that basically said, we are going to show you how to do it. We're going to build you up because we might need you at some point. Mm. And they did. 
um, while the Europeans were working on their on their um, Euro project, they would still structurally um, um, uh, support the dollar by buying American paper, right? After after you, now the euro is is not a full fledged um, energy currency, but after the euro was launched, the, um, the Europeans did not need as much American debt anymore, so they didn't build up as large currency reserves. Right. That's when the Chinese took over. So from 2000 to 2013 was the phase when the Chinese would would gobble up all the American debt. Right. right? right. In 2013, they said, "It's enough is enough. We're done here." Um, and that's where when we when we started like the last phase that we see now, where everything's really breaking down. Right. Um, the second thing that the Americans did in the 70s was, was go to, to Saudi Arabia and convince them in an, uh, uh, that, that they are going to protect them, they are going to give them money and the technology and whatever. And in, in, in return, the, the Saudis are only going to sell their, their, their oil in dollars and by extension, um, all of OPEC, which is, based, which is actually um, based in Vienna, Austria, OPEC, uh, the, the, the oil cartel, right? Yeah. Um, so that was the, the the birth of the petrol dollar. Mm. You know, you needed you needed dollar to 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 buy the most important um, energy commodity in the world. Right. It's actually have you read the I, I forgot what his name was, but there's a very interesting piece in Bitcoin magazine it's called the Bitcoin Dollar, where where he argues that you know by controlling all the on ramps to 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 Bitcoin um, through the dollar, the, the Americans could do the same thing with with Bitcoin in the future. But it's, I, haven't, I haven't read this. You should read it. You should read it. It's it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, so that's the seventies, right? Um, and then the euro, they would they would work on this. It's a very long story, um, but in the end, they actually launched it in nineteen ninety nine. Um, with I think twelve countries at the start or eleven so, countries. So maybe part of the parallel between BTC is it it's the most decentralized fiat currency because you don't have one nation kind of governing the whole thing. In theory, yes. Yes, in theory. In, and that was the, that was the idea. And then th that's why that's why you know economists will tell you it can never work that there you need a, 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 a finance minister you need right. But the, the central bankers they were super happy about this yeah. because they didn't have, they were they were even more powerful than before. Right. Um, and. And that's why they they talk a big talk about yeah maybe we should have a European finance minister but they know they know it's never gonna happen mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. the Europeans are not gonna there's not gonna be a United States of Europe mm -hmm. that's just not gonna fly and why is it is it just the the cultural histories and the linguistic barriers like do you think that's what prevents it from ever happening pretty much yeah okay. in 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 a, in a big way in okay. a big way and it's and also because it's a it's a big danger because when you when you try to I mean the European Union has been successful in one thing peace. And now you can argue, of course, we have a war in Ukraine, absolutely, but but the European Union has been successful in in, in bringing peace to the to the nations of Europe, right. um, like Western Europe, right? Yeah. Basically, the, the French and the, and the Germans are not fighting each other right. anymore with weapons, right? right? Um, and that's also a problem for the for the the central the ECB in the end because they say, okay, we are the most independent. We have we look at price stability, well. Bitcoin is even more independent, mm -hmm. and in the end, price stability is might not be the right mandate. Maybe it's monetary stability, or it's like ma uh, money supply, money supply stability. stability. Yes, exactly. Yes, of course. And also, then there is there is what's happening today. You know, Christine Lagarde. I do not. I don't see her working um, for the best interests of Europe. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Um, the things she's doing is is they are not. Um, they, they don't really work for the for 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 the ECB in the long term. She's politicizing um, the 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 central bank by having green um, monetary policy. So basically, we are now in a world where the, the 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 ECB is buying all kinds of government debt and corporate debt, mm -hmm. and now they look at the corporate debt and say, okay, we just buy green stuff, right? Mm -hmm. It's a complete catastrophe. Mm -hmm. um, and also looking at the at the um, the inflation rate, right? They they are supposed to to cap it at two percent. It's at ten percent now, mm -hmm. but that was the idea. The idea was commonly the the U.S. finance minister. He said the dollar is our currency, but your problem. Right, right. And the Europeans' solution was we make a currency that's our currency, but also our problem. It was supposed to solve the Triffin dilemma of right. national interests versus international interests because the euro already is an international currency. Right. Um, and it worked for a while. I mean, after after two thousand, you know, there was. I think there's a reason why why the the, the American um, dot com bubble burst very quickly after the euro was introduced. Right, people pulled money out of the American system, 
And then we had the whole story with uh, Iraq and Saddam Hussein going on to on, onto the Euro um, to spite the Americans, which right. didn't work out well for him. Yeah, but it, it worked out well for him in the beginning. Now I'd like to tell you about our sponsor, the Gold Investment Letter. The Gold Investment Letter helps sophisticated investors navigate capital markets and maximize their profits in trading gold, silver, and mining stocks. The Gold Investment Letter seeks out the most undervalued companies and identifies special situations in the mining sector, and then provides in-depth analysis on both their financial positions and future prospects. The Gold Investment Letter explores many complex domains, such as investor psychology, portfolio management, and macroeconomic trends, all with the goal of making you a better investor. The Gold Investment Letter offers a free version and a paid premium version, and I strongly recommend you at least sign up for the free version, because after having read a few of these issues, I can promise you it is a treasure trove of good information. You can sign up for the free newsletter today at goldinvestmentletter.com. Now I'd like to tell you about our sponsor, iCoin Technology. iCoin has just released a sleek new hardware wallet. It looks like a mini iPhone, a little touch screen and camera on it. Uh, the device has no Wi-Fi, no cellular connection, no GPS. It's a strictly physically cold hardware wallet. Uh, like I said, it's got a high-res 3-inch touch screen. It's got a camera for air gapping the wallet. Uh, it's got optional Bluetooth compatibility. And it's a really a, a brand new UI, UX experience for a hardware wallet, making it very accessible, easy to use, not intimidating. And as we always talk about on this show, the only way you can truly own your Bitcoin is by having it in self-custody. So you need a device like iCoin Wallet to truly own your Bitcoin. Go to iCoinTechnology.com today and use promo code BITCOIN23 for 30% off of this new sleek hardware wallet. So I think you said offline here that I guess I don't know that we answered this question let me know if we did or not you mentioned the EU is marking its gold to market yes which is something the United States is not doing what what is the effect on gold markets of that well and then the the follow-on question is you mentioned that Americans went into Iraq what did this have to do with the euro okay so the first question on the gold the the idea of the euro as as um as it applied to the populace, right, to the people, was that you that you also give the people a chance to opt out. Okay. And back then there was gold. Right. Right? Right. Um because Bitcoin didn't exist yet. So you give the people a chance to opt out that should regulate the money the the, the monetary policy pretty much automatically because if the inflation rises too high, people will go into gold. Mm -hmm. Um and then and that, that's why the, the gold market was totally liberalized in, uh, in, in, um, in Europe in preparation for the euro. So in the 1970s, 1980s, you couldn't buy physical gold really in, in Europe. Today you can buy it basically in every bank, every street corner. Um, you can buy physical gold. And we also, the, the actually the most important um, bullion coin comes from Austria, it's the Philharmonic. Mm -hmm. And, and, that was the idea. The idea was give the people gold that they can protect themselves against inflation if we fuck up, mm -hmm. right? Right. Um, and that's why gold is such an important role in the in the euro. And also the second the second reason is that the that the Saudis and the the, the, the oil countries they wanted uh, a direct link or let, an indirect link to gold actually yeah. something that 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 showed me okay I have X amount of euros I can buy X amount of gold yeah. and if the gold price moves. Um, to the to the upside, yeah. I get less gold, but I hope sure. yes. Um, this is basically a check on counterparty risk. When yes. you know you can exchange that currency for gold, you can opt out of their monetary policy. Exactly. You can you can you can think of it as introducing um, a new form of game theory into the monetary system yeah. because before so before we had the the, the gold standard that we had Bretton Woods, um, but for the European countries and the, the rest of the world, um, we still had some sort of game theory, right? Mm -hmm. We still had some sort of um, straight jacket. Because we needed dollars. Right. There's a reason why my little uh, Volkswagen Golf goes a thousand um, kilometers on one tank, mm -hmm. and um, an American um, super giant truck, like giant, that. exactly, yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah, goes like 200 meters, and then you have to yeah. go to the gas station. Yeah. And the, the reason is you get extremely cheap energy, and we didn't get the cheap energy, so we had to come up with with other to economize. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, and. And that was that was the idea of having of having gold as this as this um, this component. When you look at the gold chart, 
when does the current gold bull market start? Start. It starts with the introduction of the euro, and it starts because the euro um, lets basically freeze gold. It's it's hard to wrap your head around because it 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 reintroduces gold into the equation, but it totally disconnects it from the old monetary system where where fiat money was denominated in a in a specific amount of gold. Right. Okay. So you have a more flexible system. Okay. So Every making, day, making it more accessible, but not pegging it directly exactly. to the currency. Exactly. Making it more flexible. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's also why I am so pissed at the ECB mm. for being so stupid on Bitcoin because they could do the same thing with Bitcoin. They could do the same thing yeah. with Bitcoin and it would work because now, of course, with with this was all this was all drummed up in the sixties and seventies. But now we live in, in 2023, we have digital money, we have digital gold, so to say. We need to up, uh, like rethink yes. the whole thing. Right. But Lagarde... The game has changed. Um, it, the game has changed and, and, and the Europeans are not on top of the game right now. There's a <clears throat> quote on this topic that I often like to cite, which is that science advances from funeral to funeral. And it seems like we just have these mm -hmm. ancient people in place that don't understand the new technological paradigm. But it's only probably, what, a couple of decades out before this a similar strategy gets applied to digital gold once people realize this thing is here to stay. Yeah, I mean, to be fair for them, first of all, their their whole livelihood depends on um, not seeing it. Of course. And, right. and, 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 and they grew up in the system, you know, they, they learned about the system um, and we have had this state monetary system for centuries. Um, and and, and I, I understand why they don't get it, but the ECB was actually the first uh, major central bank to publish a somewhat decent paper on right. Bitcoin in 2012. Yeah. And they even talked about the Austin School of Economics back then. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the second question was this connection between... Uh, I think the Americans not liking the euro being used as a, Iraq, Iraq, right? Yes, yeah. for good. Not be not liking the euro being used as a payments cur currency for oil. Yeah, led to the American invasion of Iraq. Well, of course, I can't you know give you any proof on this. You make the case. Um, but well, Saddam Saddam switched from from um, dollars to euros pretty mm -hmm. much immediately, and it was always the idea of the Europeans to use the euro in. In the same way the Americans use the dollar to basically print money to buy energy, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. um, and and Saddam back then was an Iraq was a, was an important um, oil producer, but they were not very much aligned with the U.S. They were they were against the U.S. Mm -hmm. Very close to what Iran is 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 doing these days. Mm -hmm. And the Europeans tried many things to get the Iran to uh, to trade with them in euros and oil and stuff. That's what the whole. That's what the the whole Iran atomic thing, that the whole nuclear mm -hmm. deal is about. It's 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 in my opinion, it's more about that than 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 the Americans being afraid of them ever getting the ball. It's, all, it's always about the money. It's always about the money, and especially what money is used to buy energy. Yeah. So so Saddam switches to to euro, and then you would when you when you research this, it's funny because when you when you know media a little bit, you know how it works. Um, immediately you have these stories in the American press. It's like, yeah, but the euro is so weak, and you know they they are not gonna get rates, and it's not gonna it's not gonna work out for them. You know that's the first thing you see, mm -hmm. yeah. And then a year later, it's like it worked out perfectly well. It worked, mm -hmm. it, it, the, the euro turned around because of this, and they actually made a lot more money than they would have done with with using the dollar. Mm -hmm. um, so after 9 eleven. I don't want to go into any details because I don't know any details, but there are those stories as like, that it was very quickly decided that Iraq is going to fall, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I mean, one of the reasons might have just been that the American knew how to you know, fight wars with, with states. They didn't know how to fight wars with, with Al-Qaeda, so they did the second best thing. Right. Um, but of course, after the war, it was very quickly, it was done very quickly after the war. The, the, only, the first thing they did was turn back to, to dollar, right? The, the, the oil production back to dollar. Mm -hmm. Um, and you see the same thing popping up over and over again. You see the same thing in Iran. Um, you had this in in, in 2014. Um, the Americans were pressured into into signing the the nuclear deal um, by pretty much the rest of the world. And then you had Kerry on stage saying that if we didn't sign this, the Ameri the American dollar would cease to be the world the, the world the the currency the reserve currency of the world. Mm. Okay, so you, you can Google this. It's on you, John Kerry. John Kerry, okay. uh, Obama's Obama's uh, Secretary of State, right? Um, because because the the the, the nuclear deals um, that are also done in in uh, in Vienna, by the way, 
It's the only venue where Iran, Russia, China, Europe, and the U.S. sit on one table. The only one. Mm-hmm. Because all other, the, all other um, diplomatic um, avenues are closed by now. The Americans are not talking to the Russians, and 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 so forth. But uh, the Iran nuclear talks are still are still happening. And and after after Trump ripped up the nuclear deal, the Europeans actually um, came up with their own version of SWIFT. So that's the the the, the Society of Inter- International Worldwide Payments System, right? Yeah. So that that's that the rails that the dollar runs on, right? Yeah. Um, and the Iranians were kicked out of SWIFT partially, you know, like the Russians now. So the Europeans came up with their own system to officially just, you know, use it for trade in like medicine and, and, mm-hmm. and, and stuff. But of course, they wanted to use this to trade oil at some point. It's called Instex. It still exists. I don't know if they ever did anything. That's the thing with the European projects. They, they start them, but then they don't go anywhere. Mm. Um, and I know this because, because there was talks about also putting that um, into Vienna, right? And then the, the the Americans basically you know picked up the phone and said yeah how about no, and the Austrians said okay but we don't want it and then the French put it into Paris and gave it a a, a German a German uh, like uh, managing director because we, when the big countries do something like that the Americans are not so keen to interfere because they know that there's going to be blowback right and in the end it didn't really matter anyway because we don't I don't think we are using the euro to trade uh, oil with Iran but. I, I might be I might be wrong there, mm-hmm. um, but you can also see it from the perspective of the euro being a success. I mean, it's the it, it is the second biggest the second biggest um, uh, reserve currency, mm-hmm. and it is uh, the only one that that is um, potentially uh, something that can be used um, uh, uh, instead of the U, uh, of the US dollar. But and that's the big but with. Russia's attack on Ukraine and subsequent censoring of the currency reserves through, uh, by the Europeans and the Americans, mm. we basically killed the, this idea of the euro for good. We, we, that, that was the moment. So in if, shortly before the war, shortly before the Winter Olympics in Beijing, um, the Russians and the Chinese came together and they had a huge deal, a gas deal, hundreds of billions, and they said, we're going to use the euro. There was a, there was a signal. There was a signal to the Europeans that they trust the European money. They want to use the euro in international energy trade. This is what the, the Europeans always wanted for mm-hmm. decades, for decades. And then Merkel leaves the chancellery, and three minutes later, all hell breaks loose. And and the Russians attack Ukraine, and the the, the Europeans immediately have like a list of sanctions immediately. And you know that they didn't come up with them themselves because if they would have come up with that themselves, they wouldn't have that immediately. They would, they, it would take them a while to, to, to hammer it out. Mm-hmm. But the Europeans immediately had a list of sanctions. And one of the sanctions was the, the, the censorship of the, the currency reserves. Mm-hmm. And of course, as far as I know, the, not the, neither the Fed nor the ECB were actually happy with that. Right. That was a political decision. And this was the, the $630 billion Russian yes form. I think I think it's it's half half so half of that is in euro yeah. because the Russians actually the Russians the Russians left the dollar long time ago mm-hmm. Putin in 2010 or 2011 Putin literally said that they are going to join the euro one day mm-hmm. well I can tell you that that was a very that was a shit day in in Washington mm-hmm. you know because that is that the, this this the, the the very very old fear of German industry and Russian energy right. together. Yeah, and right. the Germans for a very long time pursued that. Yes, and then that the events of the last two years happened, and now the the whole strategy is completely um, in, in in shattered. Yeah, and and I don't know. I, is the euro ever going to be? Does the euro ever have a chance now to be? Because now it's it's basically from the from the from the point of view of the Russians and the Chinese, um, and I, for on the record, yes. I don't condone what Russia is doing or the Chinese are doing. Mm-hmm. And I just look at realpolitik, yes? Mm-hmm. Um, from, the, from their point of view, the euro is not to be trusted as well. So basically, the, the Americans managed, in, in managed to finally destroy this, this vision of, that the euro once had, once and for all, with mm-hmm. this one stroke of censoring the Russian currency reserves. Mm-hmm. I'm detecting this kind of existential dependence for the global reserve currency on it needs to be used largely to facilitate 
energy transactions, typically oil. What, what is that relationship? Is this just because energy is the primary economic input to basically every industrial activity, so you need demand for the global reserve currency to be rooted in energy to some extent? Yes, basically. So so you need energy for everything. Yeah. And if you if you only sell energy for one currency, you're going to need that currency. And everybody is going to need that currency. So so, so um, create maximum demand for the global reserve currency. Exactly. It needs it's to... all about demand. Right. It's all that it's all about demand. So so for example, you you, you can use an example from from the world of quote unquote crypto, right? Mm-hmm. Stable coins. Tether is the 25th largest central bank in the world now. Yeah. When it comes to American uh, holding American paper, so do I think that the Americans are going to crack down on stable coins? No, I don't think so. Mm. I don't think that the Americans are going to go down the route of central bank digital currencies either. Mm. They are going to go down the route of of a decentralized dollar based system, um, and and let the market do the work while the Europeans are now shitting themselves, because because then that's the thing about the Americans. The thing you have to the, the thing that we have to know about like global politics, like the the, the mm. The Chinese plan for a thousand years, right? Mm. The Russians plan for a hundred years. The Europeans plan for fifty years, and the Americans plan for five minutes, and then come riding in on a horse with a cowboy hat, and everybody is surprised because they are doing better than everybody else. <laughs> you know, um, and it's true. It's true because you, if 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 you don't have if if they don't if your counterparty doesn't have like this whole large strategy you never know what they're going to do uh, what they're right. going to do they're next. unpredictable they're unpredictable yes look at what gary gensler is doing with shit coins right mm. the europeans are super proud they have a new a new um that's called markets in me in, in crypto regulation they are now regulating all crypto bitcoin and all other coins the same way and they're super proud because they came up with it first because regulation is what we do right um and now the americans are basically saying yeah but you know we differentiate between Bitcoin and crypto, and crypto offerings, most of them are illegal securities. Mm-hmm. So what are we going to do now? 70% of the world's money is in the US. And, and, and that, that's the deepest capital markets. It's not like it's not like Europeans are going to keep the whole crypto game alive. Right. 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 Now I'd like to tell you about our sponsor, Wasabi Wallet. With Wasabi Wallet, you can receive, send, and store Bitcoin privately. In Wasabi Wallet, your transaction history and wallet balance are completely hidden. Wasabi Wallet is easy to use. All of its privacy features are built in by default, and it works with any amount of Bitcoin. Wasabi users can make CoinJoin transactions together with BTC Pay server users or Trezor Suite users. For BTC Pay server users, they can make payments directly inside of a CoinJoin. And for Trezor Suite users, you can make CoinJoins directly on a hardware wallet. These features result in the fee savings and security improvements for both sets of users. So go to wasabiwallet.io today to download the state-of-the-art Bitcoin privacy wallet. Now I'd like to tell you about our sponsor, Casa. Casa makes it simple to buy and secure your Bitcoin without wondering whether you're doing it right. Specifically, Casa provides a multi-key custody solution, which is by far the most secure way to custody your Bitcoin. Now, when I talk about Bitcoin being theft-proof money or inviolable private property, a multi-key custody model is exactly what I am talking about. Using multiple keys lets you maintain full control of your Bitcoin while also giving you redundancy in case you lose one of the keys. It's also the best way to secure your Bitcoin for inheritance planning purposes. So go to keys.casa, that's C-A-S-A, today to sign up and use discount code breedlove um so so and then you see uh, you, you also see the central bank digital currency and you have you have politicians talking about bitcoin mm-hmm. now you have DeSantis, kennedy and what's the name of the the third guy the republican vivek rama or something yeah vivek yeah and then there's uh, senator loomis also loomis right yeah it's absolutely insane you have you have three presidential candidates that are open to supporting bitcoin it's and crazy. and and opposing central bank digital currencies mm-hmm. um and that's why i my when it, with regards to what what happens to bitcoin i still believe that the americans are smart enough to get to to understand that you know they are the only the only country in the world with, that has people that would not the only the germans are going to join mm. at some point but but you could still do it there is enough capitalism and free market and you know um like 
life, liberty, and the pursuit of Bitcoin, basically, mm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, you could do that. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, if America goes on a on a brutally hard monetary standard, the Chinese are fucked. Hmm. Why? But what are the communists gonna do? What are they gonna do? They can't go on a hard monetary standard. I mean, of course, I know that that when you talk, when you see what what Jason Law is talking about, and you can look, you can see that they are realizing now that they, that that kicking out the the miners wasn't a good idea, and you can yeah. see that they are getting back in, and they are actually building a lot of the miners, right? Right. But politically, I mean, there's the, the other thing that the, the Chinese have a, a, a huge demographic problem, and they're basically going to to die out within the next hundred years because of their stupid one child. Oh, that's right, right. right. Population is going to decline by fifty percent. Yes, right. and no no regime in the history has ever. Um, um, survived that, so China might just go into civil war. Wow! Um, but but I don't know about, enough about China. Yeah. But but the thing is, if you look, there's actually, you know, media likes to foreshadow these things. There's a show. It's called Devils. Mm -hmm. There's a show. It's 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 an it's a European Italian British show with uh, Patrick Dempsey, Mac Dreamy from um, from uh, uh, Grey's Anatomy. Yes, yes, okay. And he's playing a banker. Um, a banker in London, American banker, but he he's only officially a banker. Inofficially, he's basically like working for the financial CIA, fighting the the financial war with China, right? For the Americans. And there's a there's an episode it's called Satoshi Nakamoto, hmm. where they talk about Bitcoin, and he comes up with the, this exact plan. He says, "We are going to let Bitcoin happen because because we can do it, and the Chinese cannot do it, hmm. and that this is going to give us like the chance to also get the next hundred years, hmm. and that's also the problem for." That also ties back to the Europeans, because what are Americans? Most of them are Europeans, right? Um, and that's what are Chinese? They're not Europeans. Russians, of course, yes, they are Europeans. But there's, th that history is difficult. Um, what I'm saying is, do we really want the world? You know, like like some people are saying that China is going to be the next global superpower and is calling all the shots. Do we want that? I don't. Yeah, the free world does not. Want that. No, so Europe has to find a way to to be, accept the fact that a we we do have to work with the Americans and and they are still our be our better shot. Yes, finding a third way, a neutral way, would be great, but we are very far away from. How that. does Bitcoin play into that? Does Bitcoin become a neutral option for interaction between these antagonistic parties? I mean, it should it should. We, what we see right now is that the that the Russians, they are open. They are opening the crypto rails now. They call it crypto. But what we see in author, author, authoritarian countries, and uh, we will probably see something that that's close to what the Americans had uh, with the gold, with banning of of the gold in 1933. Yeah. That Satoshi also he didn't talk about it, but you can see it in his in his in his birth uh, date, right? Um, so they are going to say, yeah, we are going. The state is going to use it. Mm. You know, the rich people are going to use it. Mm. But you, the small people, you cannot use it in everyday transactions mm -hmm. because they are afraid that people go to crypto and they are actually more afraid that people go to Tether than going to to to, to Bitcoin immediately. Right. But they are afraid that, that the demand for their stupid currency goes down because mm -hmm. because in the end, hyperinflation is nothing else than the complete collapse in demand for the currency. Mm -hmm. So so they are trying to, to fight this and they won't succeed probably, but they are trying. Um, and Bitcoin, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, I think Putin actually before the war there was an interview where he where he said, yeah, it's interesting. We're looking into it, but it's not ready yet. You know, we're using crypto mm -hmm. uh, as a as a, as a means to pay uh, for energy. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I can imagine a world where we pay for energy in gold. Ghana is doing that now. Right. Um, other African countries are, uh, and I actually, I think that in the end. Bitcoin will have will succeed in a very very bottom bottom up very very market related way. So we are talking about what the states are doing, what sure. governments are doing, but if we really have the 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 you know, Bitcoin is an invention, but absolute scarcity was was something that Satoshi found. Like the discovery, it, it was a discovery, yes. right? And if we really have absolute scarcity here. That we have a black hole that would suck every everything in, and it's for the better because there's so much fiat inflationary store of value in the stock markets, in the real estate yeah, markets, yeah, and in the art markets. Right. We don't need that. Distorted all the markets. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You know. Um. And and 
and now we have this this alternative. You mentioned something. We've got about five minutes left here. This has been a very interesting uh, arc you've painted. But we talked about this documentary offline, hypernormalization, yeah. which I highly recommend everyone go check out. It, it it opened my eyes to a lot of the political shenanigans. You used the term real politic earlier. Yeah, it's almost like how real politics being applied to populations right? yeah. to confuse and divide and all of this. How do how does this reality of hypernormalization arise from this world of fake money or the competition to control the money? Like what what is the what is the link between these two worlds of, say, the economic domain and then this political hyper-normalized domain? Well, I think the most important thing is that you keep the, 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 the masses stupid, basically, or at least confused. Yeah. Right? You never talk about the real things and then they talk about the Don't real- talk about the money. You don't talk about the money. You don't talk about the monetary system. You don't talk. I mean, even if you would talk about that, many people won't get it. You know, sure. now with Bitcoin, right. uh, there's- Millions of young people learning about this, and yeah. they can't do anything about it. And yeah. It's beautiful, but yeah. but in the old days when you still had control over all the, so what they're not, what they're now doing is is it's confused the hell out of everyone, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I think you can see this with the rise of 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 of, of, uh, of uh, cur- uh, conspiracy theories. So mm-hmm. so I'm 40 now. I was I, I had my first internet connection at in I think 1994 1995, and I remember conspiracy theories already being in there, like really really nice nicely made websites. You know, mm. the U.S. was never, but then, back then it was harmless stuff. It was like the U.S. was never on the moon. You know, Paul McCartney's dead, that mm. stuff, right? A bit of JFK here, right? Um, because because you, you confuse the hell out of people, you know. But when 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 ten people believe ten different conspiracy theories, then they don't know what's real and what's not, right? Um, and and hypernormalization that that that, um, that Adam Curtis talks about in 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 his in his great 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 uh, uh, have you seen the other one the century of the self uh, that you started with I haven't seen you it. have to check it out that was his first one okay. amazing um, and he talks about a lot about the people in in Soviet Russia right and he shows people because he has access to the BBC archive so he shows people that have lost everything that like, like all motivation every will to live every hope because they knew that their their situation was completely pointless as long as this this structure is still there, this dead structure that gives them no room to breathe. Mm-hmm. Um, but they also couldn't imagine that the structure would just go away, right? Mm. Um, and I think that this is a danger right now that we have. Where that 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 and 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 it's also something that that Bitcoin counters because Bitcoin is the only thing in the world that we can count, we, right. and we can count on. Right. We, we know how many Bitcoin there are. It is it is truth. Yes. Can, there's no debate about this, right? Right? We can debate everything else, you know. Right. And especially with macroeconomics, you know, you have yes. you sit there, you have somebody super smart, you know. Um, you talk to using to, big words, using big oh, words, and you, and after an hour, you say like, yeah, he's right, yeah, she's right, but they say the, op- the complete opposite of each mm-hmm. other. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> um, so, so we ne- we never know with Bitcoin, we know, and and that's why I think Bitcoin is so strong with young people. Because young people are completely done just listening to debates right. of of you know important people saying yeah, we should do better let we should do better let's have drinks right yeah no they want to solutions and Bitcoin is a solution you can apply to yourself immediately yeah um, or or on the macroeconomic structure so one thing that that really blew my mind um, and does that does not get talked about enough I did an interview with Mary Masuen she's now a marketing manager at Fedi and she's in Niger- Nigeria right mm-hmm. and she told me that. Nigerian companies are using Bitcoin to pay for exports from China. Hmm. So actual companies, because Nigeria has high um, uh, capital controls, yeah. so you can only use ten thousand dollars every day. But for a company, that's nothing. And even if you have, if that's enough, you don't get the dollars because you don't get the dollars within the system. Mm-hmm. And the Chinese don't give a shit. They just take. I don't know what they do with the Bitcoin. And right. of course, we can't prove this, but there has been substantial. Um, how do you say? Evidence, like like uh, there's a word, right? Um, Substantial corroborating evidence. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. So we don't have proof, uh-huh. but we but 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 it makes sense, especially with the high the high Bitcoin volumes uh, within Nigeria, etc. So I, I think I think we we might see more of that. So in a hyper normalized or hyper normalizing world where you can't make sense of anything. And and governments are intentionally sowing these seeds of confusion so that you can then just turn to the government, right, and hear whatever they're saying is like exactly they're trying to make themselves a single arbiter of truth. But the reality is, 
you can count on Bitcoin because you can count Bitcoin. It really is that simple, exactly. right? Exactly. You can count on Bitcoin because you can count Bitcoin, but this is, has been used by governments time and time again in every authoritarian state. You know, people are afraid to, to speak their mind. Mm -hmm. and, and then the definition of what is true and what is not true changes all the time. So yes. you, you always have to check what's in the paper or like yeah. what are the politicians saying. And then, and then, or maybe you you stop talking about it at all. And it's and yeah. and technology in general, but and the, and the internet in general, but the, but Bitcoin uh, specifically gives gives the individual more 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 power of movement. Yes. Also, you know, the, like the, the sovereign individual thing. Yes, right. Yes, yes. And they talk about the sovereign individual. They talk also talk about how politics will turn into a clown show because right. it, will, it will lose its its. And here we are sitting in clown are. world. The sitting in clown <laughs> world, and, and then we have to then we have to. Then we have to read like within the, the German state uh, uh, broadcast, they will tell you, yeah, but they, if they use a clown emoji, they might be right wing. <laughs> you know, I mean, they literally have like like yeah, freedom uh, is right wing now, right? <laughs> they have they have like like animated graphics that show you that Pepper the Frog is a is a Nazi hate symbol. It's <laughs> clown world. Okay, I have kept you long enough, good sir. This is a super fascinating tour of world history through the lens of money. Uh, we'll have to do it again sometime. Thank you for having me, Robert. Where can people find you on the internet? So I do. I, I work in in Bitcoin exclusively now. Uh, um, I run for all German speakers. I run Was Bitcoin Bring, which is a which is a news uh, a podcast and a, a YouTube channel. Um, and I do have an English podcast and newsletter, a Substack. It's on fixthemoney.net. Um, I run this together with my friend Yale, who is um, an American. Um, so there's a native speaker in there too who can correct my 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 writings. Um, and it's a lot of fun. So please just subscribe to fixthemoney.net and, and, and Twitter, of course. But um, for, for anybody who just wants to get the, the English content, it's the Fix the Money site. Awesome. We'll link to all that in the show notes. Nico, thank you again. Thank you for having me.